QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce inventory Excel weighted average practice problem part number one. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Looking at e-commerce situations, selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, rather online in the cloud with the help and use of third party platforms such as a Shopify or an Amazon for example, we're focused here on the inventory tracking side of things, imagining a method where we have a periodic inventory tracking system method as opposed to a perpetual tracking method. We have decoupled the sales side of the transactions from the inventory tracking side of the transaction, remembering that when we have this third party platform, such as a Shopify, for example, that's when the point of sale is happening basically like in the cloud and we're pulling in the sales information into our system using one of the methods we've talked about in prior presentations. Then now we're focused on the inventory tracking side and the related cost of goods sold for the inventory. Now remember that in Shopify or whatever platform you are using, you're going to generally be tracking the units of inventory so that you have the inventory necessary to meet the demand going forward. So you're going to be purchasing inventory when the inventory gets low, you could be purchasing inventory, tying it out to the physical count in order to logistically Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We meet the demand that is coming up and as sales happen, the third party platform will typically be decreasing the units of inventory on a perpetual inventory system. However, that information isn't pulling into QuickBooks. And even if it were, the what we really need on the QuickBooks side of things is the financial information, the dollar amount. We got to convert the units uh, to dollars so that we can track the dollars. And we might have to do some tracking of the units as well to make sure that our units are tying out. So we're going to do that in an Excel worksheet. And last time we worked a problem using a first in first out method, same kind of concept here, but now we're going to use the other kind of common inventory tracking method, which is a weighted average method. So we'll build a, a, a different worksheet, uh, same concept, different inventory tracking method. So the worksheet will look much different uh, due to that, due to the way we're tracking. All right, so let's go over here and do a similar problem. We're going to, we're going to scroll in. I'm going to scroll up in our worksheet i'm just going to build this uh from scratch here so we're going to say let's put up top let's just call it a weighted average method and let's see if i spelled that correct weighted average i almost never spell that right all right i did it weighted weighted okay so then let's put our headers up top let's make this actually black and white for our header black and white because that's what I normally do let's keep with tradition here on the headers and then I'm gonna put the headers of our table so I'm gonna say we're gonna have a date column and then I'm gonna put the product now I'm gonna have a different table for each product now so and so we're gonna put these on a side by side so you'll see how this works for the table I'm gonna build for the weighted average which will look different than the first in first out so I'm just gonna call this product number one Let's call this the unit uh, change. And this will be the total units. And then I know I'm going over the cells. We're gonna wrap the text. So it's okay if we go over on this, we'll fix it later. We're gonna say by cost per unit, the purchasing. I said by because it's, it's a skinnier word to fit in our column. And then we've got sales cost 
per unit. And then I'm gonna say tab total cost per, uh, per date, I'm gonna say. And then ending inventory balance. I'm abbreviating inventory. So let's wrap the texts and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna select all of these that I've done here. I don't need that I one. I'm gonna go up top to the home tab and we're gonna go to the alignment and wrap the text. Let's also center it, alignment and center the text. And there's our headers. I'm gonna make it a different color because we're gonna, we're gonna do this product by product, side by side. So I'm gonna make the headers like green. Let's say them, I'll make them dark green and then I need white text so it can kind of show up there. And maybe I should make the whole table bold and I'll embolden the whole table. Everything has been emboldened. Okay, so then let's say that we're gonna do some purchasing here. So I'm gonna select column A. I need to format it like a date. So let's go up top to the general up top and I can format it here with the short date, but I don't really want the year because I want to make it a generic problem. So I'm going to right click on it and format the cells and I'm going to go into my date field and right there I've got one that doesn't have a year on it. So I'm going to pick that one. So it's just a generic date. And then we're going to say I can make the date probably smaller just to save some room here. Product one, I could probably make this one smaller. This one could be smaller. This one could probably be smaller and I'll just make a, a skinny, skinnies here. So it's taller, but skinny, tall and skinny. Okay, so let's say four, one. And I'm just gonna name these all product uh, number one. This is probably redundant because I have, I've named this whole section of the table product one. But if you ever wanted to convert something into a pivot table or something like that, sometimes it's useful to have uh, the columns populated. So I tend to, to do that. So I'm going to say, all right, then the units, I'm going to say uh, unit change. Let's say we purchase two units. Now the total units, this is going to be a formula, which is going to be equal to the two units. Now we're going to have to do two rows before this makes complete sense because this is going to be a running balance. So next time it's going to be equal to this plus this, right? As we, I'm sorry, it's going to be equal to this plus this as we, as we have a running balance going down, but let's not complicate things. Now there's going to be the two units and then the cost, we're going to say we're purchasing them for $20 and then the sales cost, uh, per unit. Shouldn't there be a unit there? Yeah, it's, this is a taller column. Sales cost per unit. Uh, there is no sale. I'm going to put a zero here uh, because I'm only going to be because I'm either purchasing or selling and I'm putting them all on the same graph instead of having a separate item for the purchasing and selling. So if this was a negative change, that would indicate that it was a sale. And if it's positive, that means that we're purchasing it. So then we're going to say the total here is going to be now this gets a little bit tricky. The total uh, cost per date is going to be this times this. That's the unit change, which of course is 40. But if there was a decrease, then it would it would be the change, which would be negative times <clears throat> times the sales cost per unit. OK, so so what I'm going to do is say it's going to be this plus this. And then I'm going to say plus and then th this change, if it was negative, times this. Now, because one of these will be zero, the second part of the formula will be zero. It's not going to change the outcome, which is just going to be 20 times two. And if this number was negative, which we'll see in the future when we sell the units, then then this by part is going to be year zero. So the first half will come out to zero and the second half will calculate the formula. So, so it looks a little, little weird, but it'll, it'll, I think it'll work for us. And then the ending balance is going to be another kind of running balance type of formula. So I'm just going to say that equals the 40 here. So that's going to be our starting. I know this table looks a little bit abstract, but I think it'll make more sense as we buy more units for, for now, let's imagine that we are then purchasing these units. Let me just make sure I don't have any more purchases here. Yeah, on in QuickBooks now. So we're imagining in QuickBooks, we're buying more units. So what would happen? We'd see in 
Shopify, we need to buy more units or whatever in units. And then we would populate our table over here in order to determine, you know, for our table, or we might first come up to the units we're gonna buy two units or whatever, and then figure out the cost, the total cost, which might be 40, and then back into the cost per unit, which would be the $40 we're paying. And we might have to include sales tax and that kind of stuff divided by the two units to get the unit cost for our weighted average tracking. Okay, so let's go ahead and just plug it in here. So we're gonna imagine uh, that this is happening as we go. So I'm, so I'm gonna hit the, the drop down and we're gonna say that we have an expense. So when we do the purchases, no matter what method we use, we're basically on a cash-based method. We'll see it clear the bank account in essence. We're paying for inventory. So we're gonna say vendor one. We don't have that accrual kind of issue. And let's say this happened on uh, 04, 01, 23. I think we're on 23 at the year. And then inventory. So we're gonna say the inventory. I'm just gonna put the amount and it's gonna go into the inventory. We said $40, I believe, is that right? I believe that is right. So this is gonna decrease the checking account. I'm not using items. I'm just plugging it into the inventory account. We're not tracking units in QuickBooks. We're only tracking dollar amount. So let's save it and close it. For some reason, I didn't, I didn't open up my financials like we usually do every time. Let's do that now, right click and duplicate. Right click and duplicate, I'm a little bit off this time. What is going on here? The rhythm has been broken. Middle tab, we're gonna go down to the reports on the left-hand side, open up the balance sheet, tab into the right, down to the reports on the left. This time the P, the L, the profit, the loss. Let's change the range, close the boogie. And we're going from, uh, let's see, 04, 01, 23. What? K paso, 04, 01, 23 to 053123 and then run it and there's stuff in it already so i have this is where i ran some of the sales before but i don't want any stuff in it that's okay it's only if it's it won't bother us it's just a, a little bit of stuff so let's go back to the tab to the left close the hamburger and do a range change and go from uh 0401 uh, 23 to 053123 and run that one as well. So what we have thus far is that uh, we made a transaction with the checking account going down, checking account going down by the 40. So there it is. And then the other side is not going to the income statement, but rather is going into the inventory account, but we're not tracking the units of inventory in QuickBooks. We're doing that externally in our Excel worksheet. All right, so now we're gonna say stuff happens, products are selling, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna do a, an adjustment uh, to this or record the sales until the end of the month because we're gonna do it periodically. So all those sales are happening on Shopify. We're just tracking possibly the units within Shopify to make sure that we have enough to cover whatever uh, sales are happening. So then we're gonna say that we purchase more. So, so sales are happening, blah, blah. And we can see in Shopify, our unit sales are getting low for particular products. And so we're gonna just buy more units. We're not gonna do on a, on more of a, a perpetual system here, right? But if we're on a periodic system for our financial statements when we're gonna record the, fin the financial cost of the inventory. So let's purchase more inventory on 415, product one. And we're gonna say that we purchased one more of these uh, now. And now I'm gonna have a running balance here. So this equals the cell above it plus the cell to the left of it and enter. So now we have, we have three units. We've got our running balance going down and we're purchasing again. So we're gonna have something in this cell. So I'm gonna say 22. And so they've gone up in cost. They did cost $20 a unit. Now they cost $22 a unit because we wanna deal with the fact that there might be inflation over time. We have the same units with different costs. That's why we need a flow assumption like weighted average LIFO, FIFO and whatever. So then we're gonna say the sales, we didn't sell it. So I'm just gonna put zero there. And then the total is gonna be the same formula. I'll just copy it down. And then the ending balance is gonna be a running balance, the 22 plus the 40. So we've got uh, the 62 
is our ending balance and inventory. Now we're gonna say that we bought another product now and what I'm gonna do is keep the dates all the same and I'm gonna put all my new products side by side with basically the same table structure. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing. I'm gonna put my cursor on A, copy the whole column over to H, uh, control C and put this in column I, control V and we're gonna do the same thing here. I don't need the weighted average thing up top. So let's format paint and delete that. And I'll make this a different color so we can distinguish one uh, from the other. And so I'm gonna make this blue. Let's make it blue on the headers. And then I'm gonna try to freeze my panes now. So I'm gonna go down, freeze my pane because I hate it when pane comes up and needs to be frozen. So I'm gonna freeze the panes uh, because I wanna see the date. I wanna see the, the date as I go to the right because I don't really need this date column here. I'm gonna actually delete this date column. Let's go to column I right click and delete that because I'm just going to put everything on the same date from over here. So I'm going to put my cursor on, uh, let's just do it on this date on this cell home tab, not home tab view tab, freeze panes and the window group and freeze the panes. So now when I go to the right, I'll, I'll have that date that kind of follows, follows along here, even though it's a different color. Okay. That doesn't bother me. And then I'm gonna delete this stuff, or maybe I can just delete the second row, or hold on, let's delete the first row. Sorry about that. And I'm gonna call this product number two instead of product number one, product number two. And then on product number two, we're gonna say that we're gonna purchase two of them. So two of them. So the totals are totaling up okay now because I'm, I used that same formula. I didn't delete the formula. And then the cost of it is going to be for product number two, 105. And then the sales is zero. And this formula is the same. And then ending inventory is uh, doing that calculation again. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to say we purchase another one, product number three. So you can see this gets to be a very long table horizontally because I'm going to say copy and I'm going to put this over here. What? What's your problem, man? It doesn't like that. I'm going to copy it again. I have to be at the top. I wasn't at the top. I have to be up here on P1 and then put it there. And I'm going to make this purple this time to change the color because we're on product number three, multiple products being put in place here, double clicking. I'm going to call this product number three, product number three here too. And so then this is going to be, we're going to say that we purchased four of these. And so my running balance comes out to four because this is the first one we purchased and they cost us, these are the expensive ones, 650 and no sales per unit. So we come up to total cost uh, per date. Uh, 2006 and the total is at uh, 26. Now I would like to my for I didn't format the numbers the way I would like to here. So let's go. I'm going to select from K not including the date field, right click on the formatted cells and let's do some formatting of currency, negative numbers, bracketed, no dollar sign. I'm going to keep the pennies because when we use the weighted average method, it's gonna round to pennies, let's say, round it. All right, so this one needs to be a little bit wider. When I add the pennies, that one needs to be a bit wider. This one needs to be a bit wider. This one, these are the big numbers over here. This is the ones we try to sell. These are the ones, we get them in the store with those other ones, and then and then we steer them to these, uh, these no, I'm just kidding, any case. We're going to say this is going to be the total. Now I'm going to sum all these up. The total ending inventory. And this is going to be the change or the journal entry entry for cost of goods sold when it's when it's negative. So let's make I'm going to make this one home tab alignment let's do that wrap it and center it i'm going to make it black and white for the totals 
and then and then change this is the journal entry when it's negative so when it's so i'm going to make this red so when it's negative we ensure that's the journal entry okay so the total ending inventory then is going to be the ending inventory of all these so i'm going to say it's this ending inventory for the green product one this one for the blue product two that one for the purple and then uh the change basically up here i should have done the same let's copy that up here so it was at 40 this is the same formula and then the running the running balance then what or the the change that's happening the first one let's just say was 40 and this one is going to be a running balance that looks like this it's going to be this minus we could say uh the one above it or we could say minus uh this one so that's going to be then hold on a sec no it's going to be equal to this minus the one above it that's the change that we're going to put in place okay so let's just break this down and see what this means here we're going to say okay this is my this is what we purchased for product number one i'm holding down i'm going to hold down control when i click on this one this is what we purchased for product number two and then over here i'm holding down control to point to this one this is what we purchased for product number three that comes out to the two eight three two and that's going to be this number here that's the change two eight three two and we had product number one of forty dollars right and so that's why that's why we've, we've got uh the two eight seven two for our total inventory which we can also see is going to be then this number ending inventory plus the inven ending inventory here plus the ending inventory here that's the two eight seven two right so every time we add a new product this is going to be a very horizontally long <laughs> worksheet so the bottom line though is that we're paying in this case we're buying the inventory so we're going to be paying the 2872 now note that if you're buying all this inventory from one vendor then you're going to have to come up with some way to break out you might just see the the sales price of the 2872 which you're going to have to break out to the number of units which would be easy if it was one thing that you're buying but if you're buying multiple products then you're going to have to you know break out the cost per each product and possibly the sales tax can be a, a little bit complicated to get the unit uh, amounts right so i'm i'm just going to put this <clears throat> into our worksheet now we purchased again so i'm going to go back on over and say new and expense form another purchase and the purchase price should be for this amount right the 2832 which represents the the change per date the amount we purchase per date not the ending inventory so that's the 2832 the 2832 okay so let's do it and we're gonna say i'm just gonna say we purchased it all from vendor number one again this happened on uh 4 let's say 4 and then we're gonna say assets are going up by the 2832 2832 same transaction we're going to save it and close this this would be just a cash transaction the easy side of the inventory because we're just purchasing it basically on a cash based system in essence and we'll run the balance sheet so that it would be decreasing the checking account now our ending inventory is at 2872 which is consisting of uh those two purchases that we have made right there the 40 and the 2832 back to the report exit so there's the 2872 and if i go into here uh there's the 2872 okay so next thing that happens we're gonna say that that then on the end of the month comes around and that's when we do our periodic inventory adjustment so we can imagine what's happening here sales are happening over here we've been adjusting our inventory in our third party platform to meet the sales they've been decreasing it as sales happen on this third party platform and and now we're trying to figure out what the what the value should be on our financial statements for the sales half meaning we're going to decrease our inventory for the sales that have happened in dollar amount not in terms of just the units so we could do a, we could double check our numbers here 
in basically a Shopify system as of a period, as of the end of the month and make sure that we're, we, and we could do a physical count, double checking basically our inventory in terms of physical count. And then once we have the physical count, we can determine the dollar amount to do an adjustment decrease in inventory recording the re related cost of goods sold, the expense. So let's say that we do our, our physical count here and we're gonna say that for this inventory, we actually sold all of product number one. We don't have any left. So on 430, we'll do our adjustment. It's gonna be product number one and now it's gonna be negative. They're all gone, negative three. And then the, the uh, totals per unit, I'm just gonna copy this down. And notice that this one is always gonna be a, a copy the formula down one. And this one's always gonna be something I have to put data into. So sometimes I'll make this one, I like to make where I do the data input a different color. I'm gonna go to more colors and standard wheel. I usually make those blue to indicate I'm gonna have to do data input into these cells. I'm gonna put brackets around this whole thing too. Let's bracket it. Let's put some brackets around it, font group brackets. So I'm gonna indicate <clears throat> that I have to do a data input there. This one's just gonna be copied down. So I'll keep it uh, white. And then this one is the buy cost uh, per unit. Now, again, I'm gonna put a blue formula here because we would have to do the data input into the buy. We're not buying anything. Uh, in this case, we're recording the sales. Now we have to figure out the sales cost per unit using our weighted average inventory method. Now, as of this point in time, we had ending units of 62 and we had uh, total units on hand of three. So we can basically just take the average of that. Now, now note the problem here, of course, is these are all the same three units that we sold, but some of them cost us $20 and some of them cost us $22. So we're just going to take the average at the point in, at this point in time, which is going to be equal to 62 divided by the uh, divided by the three units. So some cost $20, some cost $22. They cost on a weighted average $20 and 67 cents. See, that's how the system is going to basically be working here. And then we can copy this formula down here, which is which is multiplying these two out. So if I copy this down, now we have the negative number because remember this was C6 uh, times uh, E6, which is now zero. So this first half is doing nothing. And then we've got C6, which is this number time F6, uh, which is now the sales cost. So this is what's being calculated. This times this gets us to the total cost per date, which is a decrease now in our ending balance. If I copy this down, is back down to zero. Now note, I had to put the formula in here. I'd like to be able to copy this formula down. So what I'm gonna do is put a, a kind of a fancy formula in here and say, hey, look, uh, you're only gonna do this if, uh, if it's a purchase side of things. So I'm gonna do a conditional formatting so that I can copy this down going forward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say if, and put the brackets in and I'm gonna, add this to the front part of the formula, or maybe it would be easier to build this from scratch. Let's just build it from scratch if, so we're gonna say then equals if brackets, and I'm gonna pick up this cell, which represents us selling units. If that's less than zero, that means we sold stuff instead of purchasing stuff. Then, which is a comma, what would, do we want them to do? I want you to take that 62 divided by the three, just like we did. However, comma, that's what the comma means. If it's false, if that's not less than zero, I want you to just put a zero there and then enter. So there we have it. So now if this was like zero or above, it's not gonna do the calculation. And so that's the idea. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We didn't sell any of product two, but I wanna be able to carry everything over on the same date line. So I'm gonna copy down any sales that needed to be copied down. So there's nothing in here. I'm gonna make this blue for our formatting purposes because that's our data input. I'll make that blue. And then this is just gonna copy down as we add new uh, cells here because that's our running balance and nothing's in here. This one, I wanna copy my fancy formula. So I'm gonna copy that fancy formula and it puts a zero there because if this was negative something, uh, then that would represent 
I, I say that's not my fancy formula. Hold on a second. Undo that wrong cell. Copy my fancy formula from here. And so now if this was negative two, it would do like a calculation in there, right? So I'm gonna uh, delete that. And then uh, this needs to be copied down. So let's just copy these down. And I'll do the same for product number three. Now, once we have these all set up, we, you can see we just do the, we could just copy these down is the idea. So I'm gonna select these two and then, okay, let's copy this one down. And then I'm going to copy my fancy formula. Just do a double check that if this was negative two, that it does a calculation here. Okay, back to zero. And so there we have that. And then our ending balances should copy down as well. So these need to copy down and I'll copy these down. So we could just copy everything down except the blue areas. That's the idea. So, and I'll try, I'll convert this into a table shortly. So hopefully it'll copy down a little bit uh, easier as we go. And you can see here that we have the 62 change thus far. And I think, did we purchase something in the, over here on, did we sell uh, anything on the blue? No, that's it. So we had a, a change of the negative 62, which just represents the change that happened on product number one. And that's what we sold. So we're gonna say, all right, at, at the end of the day here, here's our journal entry we're gonna make. Inventory is gonna be going down by 62, bringing the ending inventory to this 2810, which is this six, uh, 226 holding control and that 210 holding control and this zero, which is the 2810 and that's the 2810. So if I look at my, QuickBooks, I'm at 2832. Let's just double check that. Uh, 2832, uh, hold on a second. Wait, wait a second. I should be at, no, I'm at 2872 in QuickBooks, 2872, and we're gonna bring it down by that 62. So I'm gonna do a journal entry now. First tab, new button, let's do a journal entry. This is going long, so I'll try to do this fairly quick here. This is gonna be 05, uh, 0, no, 04, 04323. And we're just gonna write it to cost of goods sold for the 62. And the other side's gonna to go to inventory. So inventory 62. And there it is. So it's gonna decrease inventory, increase the cost of goods sold. Let's save and close it. And if I go to my balance sheet now and run it, we've got our inventories at the 2810. And uh, that's what it should be. So that looks good. And if I go into it, there's our detail. And so we're just increasing it with normal purchases and then we're adjusting it periodically at the end of the month, periodic method, as opposed to the perpetual inventory method, tracking the units and the flow assumption in our Excel worksheet. And then in the, the profit and loss, we've got the cost of goods sold at that 62 now. Now remember the sales would be re being recorded on the other methods we talked about because we decoupled recording the sales half from the inventory half. That's what it means to basically be using a periodic inventory system. So we'll do another month uh, next time, and then we'll convert our table here into a, uh, a, a, a table. We'll make this into a table so that it might be a little bit easier because it looks a little tedious to put this thing together when you start out. But hopefully that once you have it going, then you, we can add line items one at a time. It'll be a very long horizontally uh, table as we add products and whatnot. But uh, it should be easier to add them as we can kind of automate everything except for these, the blue areas for the items that we are adding. So we'll continue with that next time.